Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caddy Wren. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to link both my intro video and my week one update down below so you can go check those out. Um, for my week update for this week, um, I want to let you guys know that it has been quite busy for me. So I've been running and doing strength training this week. I've been using the fitness TV via Amazon and that's been great. Um, like I said in my previous video, I really do enjoy Jillian Michaels workouts. I think that they're really good. So I'm trying to build up some muscle mass along with trying to do some cardio stuff because I'm kind of a weird person to where like I actually really like cardio except for I don't really care for running that much. So I'm trying to get on the running bandwagon guys. So please wish me good luck with that. Um, I do want to apologize that this video is two days late. I would be posting it on Saturday but I had family coming into town and honestly it was more important to me to spend time with my family than to make a video. So that's kind of why it, this video is late. But I think that we're going to talk about something that I think is really important and I hope that it starts up some good discussions. Um, so that's kind of like my weekly update and everything. I guess like the only thing I can kind of add to that is I have lost about a pound and a half. And I did a BMI calculation. I started out at a BMI of 25.5 and now I'm at 25. So if you don't know the, um, let me let me just make sure that I can get this correctly said. So the ideal BMI is between 18.5 and 24.9. So I am like right there, almost to what would be known as an ideal a BMI, which is laid out by the Center for Disease Control or the CDC, as well as the um, World Health Organization or WHO. So before I get into this video, I this is kind of like near and dear to my heart because I feel like we need to discuss this and we need to make a change in the health industry to where we get away from using these BMI calculations. I think that they don't take into account a lot of factors and it's kind of, to me, considered bad science. Um, I do have a science background. I am working on my master's. So, and from learning about physiology and the composition of the body, so many things go into how your body functions and how your body works. People try to make it seem so simple, but it's actually unbelievably complicated. And because of that, this is why I pers like coming into this video and not necessarily doing a lot of research before I started like reading more about BMI and kind of why it's bad. That's kind of like why I was like, you know, this isn't really a good thing because you're just looking at people's age, their sex, their weight, their height. That's four different things. And that's it. So four different things is gonna tell us if you're obese, ideal, overweight, or underweight. Now, if that's kind of a red flag to me. It's not taking into account a lot of other things. And we're gonna kind of like talk about some, um, a couple of the reasons why um, BMI is not very accurate. And then I also wanna talk about some of the different ways that you can better measure your um, body fat percentage or and get a better, understanding of where you're sitting at if you are at more of an ideal weight or if you might be a little bit overweight. So we're going to get into this. All right. So the first thing, and honestly, I had no idea about this. Um, I am getting stuff from NPR. They're kind of like, there's, I'm using two sources to pull, I'm using like multiple sources, but like this is kind of like a really good synthesis of what I'm talking about. So I'm kind of using them. Um, and it is on my laptop because Stuff didn't want to get printed out today, guys. So we've been having some sort of technology problems, so we're gonna work through them. But anyway, um, if you don't know what NPR is, they are the National Public Radio. Um, you get them on your long wave radio, I think, yeah. And they are broadcast um, nationally. I know a lot of people, I know some people that like it, and I like you know some people that don't like NPR. So I personally, like some of the content that they have. Do I like everything? No, but I do think that's sometimes a good way to get two sides of the story. 
And I feel like so often in media, especially in media today, we only get one side of the story, we don't get the other side. So that's kind of why I think that it's a good, a good way to get some information. All right, so the first thing is, the person who came up with the BMI calculation, and I've tried to say this guy's name, so I'm sorry. Um, he is a Belgian. He lived in the early 19th century, and his name is Lambert Adolf Jacques Quetelet. I know the last name I know is not right, so um, I'm sorry about that. I do apologize, um, Miss, Mr. Lambert. I'm going to call him by his first name because I can't say his last name. <laughs> um, basically, he was not, actually not a physician. He was a mathematician, and when he, he came up with this 200 years ago. So we're using a calculation that's over about 200 years old to tell us today, are we healthy or are we not healthy? Now, I know that we used some calculations from a long time ago, the um, Pythagorean theorem being one of them, but that is a math, that's a mathematical equation that works. This mathematical equation is not necessarily something that works. So that's kind of a red flag to me. I think that this is something that needs to be, that's shown that it's not very updated and needs to be looked further into. So another thing that, um, that kind of, that is brought up is that the calculation is not really physiologically sound. So basically the whole reason why they're saying that is that it's not taking into account that your bones and your muscle is actually denser than what fat is. Out of your out of bone, muscle, and fat, your fat is gonna be the least dense. This is why when people say like gaining a pound of muscle is gonna a pound of muscle is heavier than fat, well bones are even denser than that. So it is something good to kind of look into to realize, hey, so I might have kind of like a higher BMI if I'm an athlete, but that doesn't mean I'm overweight. And a perfect example of this is we actually looked at our star quarterback for the football team. We analyzed his BMI in my physiology course. And what we found was that he's classified as overweight. But if you look at this guy, you know he's solid muscle. You know that there's probably like, I don't know, like 2% body fat on him, if that. So there's no way this guy is overweight. So. This is kind of showing that this is a very outdated calculation because it's not taking any of this into account. Let's see. I think what's also interesting about it is that um, it is considered bad statistics. And the whole reason behind that is when this was done, people were being more sedentary, they weren't necessarily moving around. There weren't really, there weren't professional athletes necessarily back in this day. Yeah, there are people probably playing sports and riding and doing stuff, like being, doing certain physical activities, but not to the point where it is today. Not where people are doing the Olympics, people are professional athletes, that is their job. And so it was not taking any of that into consideration whatsoever. There also doesn't really take into account it basically suggests that by using decimal points that there are distinct categories of overweight, obese, and underweight, and ideal weight. And like I said, like I, for mine, I like considered overweight, but I think if people like met me in person, I know like a lot of the people that um, know me, a lot of them would probably look at me and be like, you're not overweight, like you're fine. So. And I did forget to mention at the beginning of this, um, I will be taking two week photos to kind of show my progress so you can kind of see more of my journey and those will be posted on Instagram and Twitter. So keep, make sure that you are staying up to date with those. Um, and then some more, I think this is a good point too. And I don't know exactly how true this is, but saying that more cynical members of society suspect that medical insurance industry lobbies are wanting for BMI to be continued because it allows them to discriminate against people based on their BMI 
And so they're able to charge people more based on their weight. Um, I have a friend who, I think this actually was the case for her, to where her weight was originally, she was having to pay more for insurance, and now that she's lost weight, she pays less for insurance. Now, some of this I can understand, especially if you have somebody who is morbidly obese, who is just a dent or their health is being really, really impacted by um, their weight. But there are also some people, like you could argue that you have somebody who is really into fitness and is a really big athlete, and they're obviously, like by looking at them, they're like a bodybuilder and they're not overweight whatsoever. But because of how much their weight is compared to their height, they're considered overweight. And so you could argue that the industry, that the insurance industry could be like, ha, huh, your BMI is this much, so you're gonna have to pay this much more. Um, like I said, this is kind of like one, something where like more cynical members of our society might be thinking the insurance stuff with uh, the United States is kind of complicated. I don't even pretend to try to understand it because I know it is extremely complicated. So if you want to learn more about that, I do suggest you do more research. Another thing is that by continuing reliance on BMI, um, doctors are not really feeling the need to do more digital measurements on patients. And I mean, and this is kind of what can be bad sometimes. I don't know about any of you, but I've had primary care physicians who have rarely have they even like touched me or like done an examination. I know some doctors are really good about that where they're like doing examinations to make sure everything looks fine. But my primary care doctor like that I've had recently hasn't really done a whole lot of that. When I've gone to other care doctors to like get stuff done, they've done a much more physical exam on me than he has. So this is kind of a way to be like, okay, like we'll just do a few calculations and see if you're okay or not, and then if you're, you know, obese, they'll be like, oh, you might want to, might want to diet. And I know that there's even like some doctors who are really hesitant about talking to their patients about using good diet and exercise habits because they don't want to make their patients upset. So it's kind of, it's just kind of a huge thing. Um, but yeah, like it, it almost like allows your doctor to almost be lazy and not have to even like do additional measurements on you and that you'd have to go to like a third party source like I know gyms are great about having all this equipment and measuring for you to allow you to actually know what your actual body fat percentage is and I think that the doctor's office should have that as well and that we shouldn't have to pay like a premium at a gym to get that done so that's kind of my thoughts on it um, the last thing, and I don't know, I'm going to have to do like some more research on this, but it's saying like this is kind of an embarrassment to the U.S. because we're really relying on this, but some other countries are not. I don't know. If you are from another country, like you should definitely let me know. Like, do you guys use a different system? Do you like that system? Um, leave that in the comments below or hit me up via Twitter or Instagram or anywhere you want to. <laughs> Take into consideration more than just your BMI. Yes, it's kind of a good quick indicator, but our bodies are so complicated and so complex that we need to look at alternative methods to just using your BMI. Well, that's all I have for today. So if you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more of these types of videos, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to stalk me, my links will be down below where you can hit me up on social media. But I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and keep looking up because that's where it all is. And I will see you guys next week.